Boyer in the end zone. I mean, I think everybody expects to get drafted. But based on like the team meetings I had and what people were telling my agent, I mean, trust me, I wouldn't have had cameras at my house if I didn't think it was gonna happen. I have not planned for this. I have not planned for um, not being able to continue my football career. It's getting real, like you might, this may not work out. In the end, it's probably better I didn't get drafted because I, I got to choose to come to New England. I remember my agent telling me, he's like, I think you should go to New England. And I'm, I'm thinking like, well, Tom Brady's there, obviously. Touchdown, Tom Brady! And I was like, I think you're crazy. And he goes, just trust me. I know, you know, Bill and I know Nick Casario. I know these guys and they really want you to come up there. I know for a fact that had I been drafted to some other team, I, I probably wouldn't have had as long of a career as I've had because I just learned so much between, obviously from, from Bill, but from sitting in a room with Tom day in, day out. Good evening, everyone, on a beautiful night for football in New England. Tonight, they meet a longtime rival, the New York Giants, in this final preseason game. So it was me, Tom, Andrew Walter, and Tom obviously wasn't playing. It was going to be me and, and Andrew Walter playing, and we do these call sheet meetings with the offensive coordinator, and it's me and Andrew, and, and he was going to start. And he's going over and he's gonna get him wrong. Bill O'Brien like looks at him, his face gets bright red. He's like, Hoyer, you're playing the whole game tonight. Get ready to go. And he just got up and walked out. I hadn't even gone over one single play on the call sheet. And I was like, okay, I guess, I mean, I guess I'm playing. They just beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl two years before that. And it's the same guys. It's like Justin Tuck and OC Manura. He's kind of done this preseason. And now the big rush comes again as Justin Tuck. And I'll never forget, like on the first drive of the game, and the dude came free and just hit me in the back. Hoyer, hard from behind, coming out on blitz from the outside. Was... And I came over to the sidelines and like, great job not fumbling on that one. I'm like, that's good. Like, that, <laughs> that's like, that's like a good play. You know, once they took those guys out and it was like kind of like the second guys versus the second guys, it became a little more fair. <laughs> There's one pass I remember from that game was to. Um, Greg Lewis, who I think he's a receiver coach now in, in Philadelphia. There he goes, oh, nice. Man, what a hit put on it. That was kind of like the moment where like, okay, like I can, I can hang in this league. On Friday, the Patriots cut 22 players, including 12 veterans. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. I kind of prepped my wife. I said, look, I don't know how this is going to go. And I remember coming home and I was like, all right, I got, I got released. And she's like, well, what does that mean? And I said, I don't, I really don't know. And I was like, but I think I'm gonna go to Home Depot and buy some moving boxes. I remember sitting there watching that first game of that year. Touchdown to Rob Gronkowski. And I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't stay here. I don't wanna be driving around Foxborough. I don't wanna, so we went back and we moved in with my in-laws. I think just seeing his drive, there's a reason he's the greatest of all time. When I left New England and finally had a chance to play, I just tried to copy what he did. Two different players, two different skill sets, but his preparation, the way he built up his teammates, the way that um, he held people accountable. One, I think of being thankful that uh, that was, they finally gave me an opportunity to get back in the league. My first NFL start. At that point, I didn't even know enough of the offense. I basically remember going to the offense corner and be like, look, I know these like 15 plays and I'm gonna try to throw to Larry Fitzgerald. Playing for the team you grew up rooting for is the dream. Like, you know, I remember wearing a Bernie Kosar jersey in the backyard, like now I'm actually gonna be wearing the real jersey. And then unfortunately my third week, we were playing Thursday night football and, and I tear my ACL. So that kind of cut that dream short for that year. It was a chance to reunite with someone who I had been with before in Bill O'Brien. The greatest memory about that year was just the excitement of it all. To get a chance to say that I was a starting quarterback on a team that went to the playoffs, that was huge. Touchdown, I had learned a lot from playing in Cleveland. I had learned a lot from playing in Houston. 
And now I was in a system that I felt really comfortable with. And once again, here it is where I think things are going well. And another Thursday night game and I fractured my forearm. I think we have a chance to be a pretty good team. We went out and played our first game against Carolina and it just didn't go well. Every game after that, I think we lost on either the last possession of the game or in overtime. But at that point, we were 0-5. Ultimately, I think that kind of falls back on the quarterback. I think Jacoby Brissett was my favorite memory about going to Indianapolis. And I always tell this story about the first time I met Matt Castle was my first start for the Browns and he was the backup in Minnesota. And we kind of all have this like bond of being Tom Brady's backup. And we all feel like we know each other before we've even met each other because we've all sat in that room with him. It's definitely been quite an adventure is a good way to put it. Um, but I feel really lucky because th throughout the process of Brian, you know, move, us moving as a family and his career in the NFL, I feel like we've had the opportunity to kind of be tested as like a family. You know, you're, you're so um, deep in like trying to make it work, trying to make sure you're on a team or win a starting job and do all those things. And I think I kind of took a, a shift probably when we, we ended up in Chicago. I, I made sure that on Saturdays before a game, if my son had soccer game, like I would go and stay as long as I could. My job is not the main priority for the family, like the family is, is the main priority. I would like to tell you that every time it happens, it gets easier, but I think with having children, it actually has gotten to be a little harder. As much as I'm like an expert box packer and all that, <laughs> I feel like managing everyone's emotions yeah. and attaching and detaching, and that's definitely yeah, I think the a biggest, challenge. sorry, mm -hmm. I think the moment I saw like that really start to take place was when we came back here from San Francisco. Like it was a Monday and I was in the, the parking lot to go get my son a Halloween costume. And he said, hey, I uh, just wanna let you know we're gonna trade you back to New England. And I think it was like the furthest thing from our minds. It was a shock and I remember having to tell her that. And like, and that was the first time it was like the middle of the season, the middle of the school year. We lucked out because that happened so late on Monday night that right. there were no flights to come yeah, back to that New was, England. That's what it was, yeah. So Brian was able to come to the kids' school for the Halloween parade the next right. morning and then brought his like duffel bag and was like, okay, and left straight from the school to the airport. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't get to stay for trick-or-treating. Right. Oh my gosh. Going through what we've gone through, you know, going into my 12th year, like, the end is a lot closer than the beginning. And when she said about, you know, moving back here and making this our home, it just made sense for all of us, all four of us. I think right. for the first time, and we always joke, like this is the first time that we actually chose where we want to go. It wasn't right. determined by a job. Right. Where, kind of your feet planted in the ground right. with, the, with the hope to kind of like put down some roots is totally opposite of every single thing. We bought this house not knowing I was ever going to come back to the Patriots. So when that opportunity came up this spring, it was like, well, now we're actually gonna get to live in this house. And people would be like, well, did you know he was gonna, I said, I swear I didn't know he was gonna come back right. here. Like, we were ready to hit play and live here more permanently. And it was just funny because it just kind of worked out. Um, yeah. So. I think there's always moments of doubt, but I think I, I always believe in myself. Now I'm at the point where there's only really one team that I wanna play for. You know, so I'm fortunate enough to be back here for my third time, but um, there's never been a doubt in, of my own capability of playing. Warriors going that way. There's a Paris, able to hold on. Touchdown, Patriots. There's no camaraderie in locker rooms as much as there is in, in the New England locker room. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of teams in the NFL have that same continuity and consistency year after year after year. I think it starts with Bill and it starts with Mr. Kraft. When you're able to have multiple guys on a team that have been on the team 10 plus years, I mean, I don't know how many other teams have that. And I'm just thankful that I'm able to be back and be a part of it. Touchdown, Patriots! And they're bound for Super Bowl 53! I think a lot was made about the preparation for that week, and I think I was just lucky enough that they ran a system that I knew a lot of information about because I had played in it um, for two different times in, in two different years. And so I just knew that I was gonna do whatever it took to 
prepare our defense to play the best game that they've ever played. And, you know, they went out and did it. And the Patriots have won their sixth Super Bowl title. It's really hard to put into words because now you've, not a lot of guys get to go to the Super Bowl, period. But to go three times and the first two times to lose, to now be on the other side of it, when the Super Bowl ends, it's a show. Whether you won or lost, it's like, well, what do I do now? How do I find my family? Like, how do, where do I line up to see the trophy? Even though I wasn't able to be out on the field and contributing, I knew that I contributed throughout the week and throughout that entire year. And so it's just a, a validation of all the ups and downs, the new teams, the injuries, all that stuff, to be a part of a Super Bowl winning team, like they can never take that away from you. World champions, put on your rings. I've taken the punches and gotten back up. And I think that's the biggest thing is, okay, I got cut, okay, well like, I'm not gonna just quit, I'm never gonna quit. And I think there'll come a time where I realize like, you know, whether it's physically or mentally, I can't do it anymore, but I'm not there yet. And you know, so for me to have the opportunity to come back and, and play in New England, it makes it special. And, and to me, if I can end my career as a Patriot, then that's the ideal scenario.